<laughs> Hello viewers, the me and team here and welcome back to the uh, multiplayer curb stomp of the AI. In this video I'm going to be working up towards engineering as I said I was planning to do in the previous video and it cuts off right around one turn from it so in, in tomorrow I'll be uploading the military build-up for Pakal but um, for today it's just going to be a little bit of economic management and going over some of the things you guys left in the comments from before um, I, I know one of you said the commentary is just fine the way it was and uh, for our first video, I had a lot more to discuss because I had to, I was able to discuss what was going on prior to now, and um, the kind of map it was, the fact that it's a multiplayer game, so on and so forth. But the reality is, even at double speed, which is I think the fastest I can let this go, where you can still see what I'm doing and understand it if you're willing to pause, it's I'm not going to have as much to discuss in um, future videos. All right, so uh, I'll get straight to the uh, questions of the comments. Uh, first one that I saw by Heaven's Frogman. I got you right in this time again. <laughs> yeah, he's a great uh, Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen Let's Player that I've seen. He also does quite a number of other games, so uh, check him out if you get the chance. Anyway, um, he suggested that I cover some strategies that are good for beginners. Um, probably the easiest one to start and pick up quickly is the, uh, well, you use cottages, but not exclusively. There is a guide written to it on the Siphonatics forum titled Cottages with an exclamation point or two. I, I guess I can post the link in the uh, description. It is written by Dave MCW, who always suggests to newer players to run cottages. You can use that to drive most of your tech in a couple specialized cities and then just uh, work from there. As you get better, you'll have a better great person farm, better prioritization, prioritization of buildings, and so on and so forth. Another good thing uh, beginners can try to do is just, just to go for the early rush and get a big land lead, which until maintenance starts killing you, it, it isn't really all that hard to um, keep up in tech with a huge amount of land eventually. Uh, I pretty much got away with just straight up warmongering until I started trying to win on emperors. There is that. Like, just build up mass horse archers or, you know, axe rush somebody and then recover a little bit. Uh, really, the early rush is a uh, good lift for the middle difficulties. So, those are the two I'd suggest trying the most. Um, running very heavily on specialists or uh, what I did in this game, working mines as a... Um, impetus for economy can be a little bit more challenging. Actually, I didn't really get to my tile improvement, so I'll cover that next. As you can see, we're all hills for the most part, except for a few rare exceptions. So, early in the game, before machinery, you really have to use mines or nothing. And uh, once you have machinery, you know, windmills are still pretty bad into like replaceable parts, unless you're financial and have Riverside. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, Riverside windmills, and I'm not financial, so that doesn't help me. But it can if you are financial. So, about mines. If you use a grassland mine to build wealth, it is roughly as good as a representation specialist without the great person points. Yes, yeah, seriously. It, it took me a while to realize that. Like, you work two grassland for, uh, mines for um, one food, three hammers each, build wealth, and you get six gold. Well, rep scientist is six speakers. And not only do you get six gold, but you can use that to increase your slider and improve the commerce multipliers through your best science cities, the ones with the academy, library, and later on Oxford University. So actually, um, not only are mines pretty solid to work early, for economy, if you're not building units or other things you need, they can, um, they don't need to grow. Uh, they're the earliest tile improvement that's really strong that doesn't need to grow, that isn't a special tile. So, if you have the hills, building wealth and research gets a big lift. I actually went currency in this game before I went for calendar. I did not get it before pottery, like uh, QNL down there. But then again, I wasn't uh, Praetorian rushing people with a bunch of deficit money. 
So uh, we had different situations. But regardless, early currency is a big factor on this map. And even though I did have some calendar resources to use, the currency was just, it was a big lift. Uh, that and bureaucracy were really what made a difference for me on this map. So anyway, yeah, if you're a beginner, try uh, early military or just working with cottages. And then as you get more comfortable with the gameplay mechanics, more comfortable with how things go, the expansion timing, working your improved special tiles, uh, branch out from there. Also, um, if you're just starting out and you're not playing on high difficulties, you can stay pretty close to the AI and power and easily be able to defend yourself just by making in one or two specialized military cities. So um, do that. Uh, keep the troops on your border. If they declare on you, kill them. And uh, 1.5 workers per city. That's the rule of thumb. If you have that, uh, you probably won't fall too far behind in tile improvements. The real rule is just don't work on improved tiles if you can help it. Uh, make sure you have enough workers for that. Okay, uh, let me check out the next request. Ah, the improvements and viability of later game improvements, such as windmills and doing the food math in your fat cross, city sites, how far is too far, and the tech tree. Um, okay. I'll start with the tech tree, because it's very relevant to this game. Normally, people go down the liberalism path, because the uh, AI has a tendency to research through machinery, engineering, guilds, and banking first. So, if you research something like, uh, I don't know, philosophy... You can trade for machinery and feudalism with partial research or the small trade ship in addition, or you know even uh, engineering. Whereas if you were to say research machinery yourself, you would then not have philosophy, not have feudalism, and whatever. So as you can see, researching text that the AI does not tend towards uh, will give you a huge beaker multiplier, more than any improvement you can put in a city. Uh, very common early research texts are alphabet for mid to low to mid levels, uh, aesthetics for very high levels. Well, alphabet can work in high levels also. Uh, compass is often very good. The AI does not go there early. Drama is good. Philosophy is good. Music can be good on occasion. Um, paper and education are often good, but if you want to win liberalism, you might want to hold off trading, especially education. And then later in the game, it's a little tougher. Um, biology can be... Well, biology is often the best. Democracy can be a good trade chip if you can get there reasonably soonish. And steel often works. So you have some range of things. But obviously if you want military and you want it first, well, <laughs> you better get there first. So you're not going to be trading for it. And you probably won't want to trade it away right away. Uh, as for later game tile improvements... Um, Windmills and workshops, and to a lesser extent, water mills, come to mind there. Actually, they can all be very good improvements if you have the right civics and technologies. Windmills start being able to pull their weight in low food cities at replaceable parts, where they add a food to the hill and a hammer to the hill, and, and a hammer to the hill. So you're not giving up so much for it, and it's actually a better yield overall than mines. So it just depends on your uh, food distribution. Mines can overtake them again at railroad. The nice thing about windmills is with a, um, electricity and environmentalism, if you're in an empire that can handle environmentalism, it can be uh, amazing. They're actually almost as good as towns then. So windmills are good in that regard. For workshops and water mills, what you really want is state property for communism. Well, communism for state property, which can add a food to each of those and make them very competitive with any other tile improvement in the game. Cast guild, uh, chemistry... Communism workshops are amazing, and you can base an entire empire around spamming those out if you know what you're doing with an upgrade scientist to get early communism. So that covers the uh, later improvements. For city sites, an evaluation of how far is too far. This is a game-to-game -game thing, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see, I settled pretty far away from my capital with that commerce site down there, um, and even further with the farm site on the Rome's border. Really, you need to get a feel for it on your difficulty level. Uh, how much is this going to cost you in maintenance? You can actually calculate it. That kind of thing's been done on the forums, especially by Vikawu. So if you really care to check it out, you can do it that way. Or you can fill it out. Uh, commerce resources, uh, access to commerce resources by expanding, having trade routes, 
are things that can influence your decision to settle far away early in favor of doing so. Because if you block more cities, you're going to get more land ultimately. So how far is too far? The answer is really, it depends. The more you know what you're doing, the better feel you have for how much commerce you can get away with, and the better you are with great people, the further away you can get away with settling.